The new anime cell shader doesn't really work, but I think I fixed it. When I made my first cell shading tutorial, my goal was to give the normal setup the ability to react to different colored lights in a scene. And where I technically succeeded, the new version of the cell shader came with its own set of problems and broke way too easily. But after weeks of problem solving, I finally found the easiest way to make the ultimate cell shader and a few more tips that I'll tell you about later. But first, welcome to the Comfy Mug channel. My name is Christian and I spend countless hours learning how to make anime stuff in Blender so that you don't have to. So make sure to like and subscribe with notifications enabled so you don't miss out. And if you want to help me keep making these videos on YouTube, I have a Patreon where you can support me and get some custom built anime assets in return at the start of each month. The first tier is only $2 a month and I just released a new set of anime foliage and trees. So check out the link in the description. Your support there really helps me out. Now, with our render settings optimized, and a simple UV sphere and sunlight added to our scene, with the strength set to 3 and angle to 20, we'll start making this cell shader just like any other, with a diffuse BSDF, shader to RGB, and a color ramp set to constant. And this is normally where you would be done, but this time, we'll duplicate our color ramp and add a mix color node set to hue. This is where the magic really happens, because if we change the second color ramp's stops to just black and white, and plug in the nodes as you see on screen, we can now add a point light to our scene and give it a different color, and our cell shader will adopt that light's color, or more specifically, its hue, in perfect cell shading fashion. And the colored light's effective area doesn't have to stop at one value shift. You can adjust the white stop to let it pass through the next value by copy-pasting the different color stops positions. You may notice a tiny amount of overlapping on the edges of the colored light's effective area, but that's easily fixed by adding anywhere between 0.003 and 0.0035 to the original color stop's position. And if you want the colored light to have less of an effect on your cell shader, you can lower the value of the white color stop and it'll shift back to its original color. Now, I would normally stop the tutorial there, but if you want a bonus tip to make your cell shader look even better, let's add a Suzanne to our scene and give it the same cell shader. But this time, we'll click this button to make it an independent copy, and we'll also go to our object properties, click the visibility menu, and disable shadows. After that, we'll add a mapping node, a mix set to vector, and a texture coordinate node, and connect them as you see on screen, making sure to plug the object output into the vector mix's B input. And now, you'll notice something interesting going on with our Suzanne, because it isn't shaded like it normally would be. And that's because, when connected to the normal input of a diffuse BSDF, the object output from our texture coordinate node makes any object act like it's completely spherical. You can see this more clearly by increasing the factor of our vector mix to 1. This is just an easy way to soften the mathematically perfect shading Blender normally does and make the object feel a bit softer. And you can even add a soft gradient connected to a mix color set to overlay to make the shader a bit easier on the eyes. And after that, feel free to add more lights of different colors and have fun with your new anime cell shader. But if you really want to make your 3D objects look 2D, check out my tutorial on adding different outlines to your models. Remember to subscribe with notifications enabled and check out my Patreon if you want monthly anime assets and to have your name up here with these awesome people. My Patrons make these videos on YouTube possible, and I am just so blessed and amazed that you all contribute to what I do here. Oh, and in case you guys were wondering, I originally set out to make part two of the anime grass tutorial this month, but as I was editing the tutorial, I began to notice a few flaws in the shader, and after my editing software crashed and I lost a lot of footage, I decided I would post part two after I iron out those flaws. I don't ever want to sacrifice the quality of a shader or tutorial just for the sake of getting another video out. So in case you were wondering about part two, it'll come a little later when I'm confident in its quality. But thank you guys so much for your understanding and thank you for watching to the end of the video. I hope you all have a comfy day and I'll see you here next time at the Comfy Mug.